First, let's roll back to the 80s. Back then, researchers simply wanted to make computers understand human sentences, for example, to translate. So they came up with recurrent neural networks, RNNs. But you may already know, computers can't deal with words, but can deal with numbers. So scientists decided to give every word some set of numbers, called an embedding, and do some math with them. Say we want to translate this sentence. So you start with the first word, I. The network converts it into an embedding. You take that embedding and use it to create your first meaningful vector, called a hidden state. Now you take this hidden state and apply the new love embedding to it. How? This is where the matrices magic happens. The network learns how to combine these words. It decides how much of the old state should you keep and how much of the new one add. That's what the machine learning is all about. By processing thousands of examples, the network figures out what exact numbers statistically suit well. After the combination, we continue this process until the end of the sentence. Then we pass the hidden state, which is basically compressed sentence in one vector, to this special thing called decoder. The decoder is unwrapping this meaningful vector and gets a Spanish word on each step. That's it. RNN is simple, and that's why it's lame. It works for some short sentences, but we have issues for the long ones. During the training, it completely loses the info about the first embeddings, so it can't update its weights properly. Fast forward to the 90s. Researchers came up with long short-term memory, LSTMs. This new architecture introduced a memory cell. In regular RNNs, you just have the hidden state, but in LSTMs, you also have a memory where you can store important meanings for later. It's not that important for this video how exactly we manage the memory and hidden state together. It's just also some matrices math which machine learns. What's more important is that now our model is stacked. We have multiple layers of LSTMs on top of each other. Why? Human languages have different levels of abstractions that come naturally to humans, but not to computers. So we are trying to take it into account too with these layers. Okay, let's walk through an LSTM. Each layer takes the previous layer's hidden state, updates its own memory, and creates a more abstract representation. Layer two doesn't even see the original word embeddings. It only processes what layer one gives it. At the end, layer two's final memory and hidden state have a super abstract, high-level representation of the whole sentence. Okay, so how does the decoder actually turn that back into Spanish words? We pass the final states to the decoder, starting with the start token. It processes through its LSTM layers and predicts the first word, then uses its own output as the next input, continuing until it hits an end token. This gave us pretty decent quality back then, but the weakness? You're still cramming the entire text into one final single node. Around 2014, researchers were asking, how can we let the decoder look at all the intermediate hidden states? And that's why they came up with attention mechanism. Here's the change. Instead of throwing away the intermediate hidden states, we keep all of them and pass them to the decoder. At each generating step, the decoder decides which encoder hidden states to pay attention to. It compares its current state to each encoder hidden state and calculates how relevant each one is. Then it multiplies each encoder hidden state by its relevance and creates a custom context vector. The decoder takes the start token and this custom context, processes them through its LSTM layers, and translates the first word. This repeats for each word. The attention spotlight moves across the input sentence based on what's being generated. Google Translate switched to this architecture around 2016, and suddenly it got way better. But there's still room to improve for LSTMs. All we're doing is basic math operations, matrix multiplications and additions. GPUs are amazing at doing those operations fast in parallel, but we still process words sequentially. You can't process the second word until you finish the first one because you need its hidden state and memory. You can't parallelize this task. We're making the GPU wait. And it's painfully slow when training on massive data sets. So in 2017, a team at Google asked, what if we got rid of sequential processing entirely? June 2017, Google published a paper called Attention is All You Need. Here's the main idea. What if each word just looked at all the other words simultaneously on each hidden layer? That's the transformer. We got rid of the memories entirely. Now we only have hidden states. That's how it works. First, we convert all three words to embeddings at the same time. Then we apply self-attention. Each word simultaneously looks at every other word, including itself, calculates how relevant each one is, and creates a combination. After self-attention, we have three new representations. Each contains information about itself and all other words, and calculated each word in parallel. Stack multiple layers, repeat self-attention many times. At the end, the encoder outputs final hidden states. All of them get passed to the decoder. The decoder generates words one at a time, so it can't look at future words, they're not generated yet, so it's using masked self-attention. Attention on words generated so far. Then, cross-attention to all the encoder outputs to figure out what's relevant. Finally, calculate probabilities and predict the next word. Repeat by feeding the decoder's generated words back in. You may notice the decoder generation is still sequential, but that's a topic for another video. Most importantly, Transformers solved the main bottleneck. It got way faster training, better at handling long sentences, and it scaled. Then OpenAI decided, what if we only need the decoder? What if we just want to generate text, like continuing I love with JetBrains? For the text generation, you only need the decoder. So they built GPT, Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. You give it I love, it does masked self-attention through 96 layers in GPT-3, looks at the last word's hidden state, 
and predicts JetBrains. Then adds JetBrains to the sequence and keeps going until it hits a stop token or reaches its limit. The context window. No encoder. No cross-attention. Just masked self-attention. That's GPT. Then OpenAI figured out that scaling and training GPT on massive amounts of text learned basically everything. Grammar, facts, reasoning, coding, all from predicting the next word in a sentence. Add more layers and training, and you get ChatGPT. Let's summarize. 50 years of research, each solving one piece of the puzzle, not knowing they were building toward AGI. RNNs gave us sequential processing, LSTMs added memory, attention let us look everywhere, transformers made it parallel, and GPT scaled it to ChatGPT. Thank you for watching. Follow for more.